Welcome to the Kim B. Davis Show. Here we'll talk to the leaders in technology, culture, business, and the arts. We'll cover politics, advocacy, motherhood, writing, mental health, and mostly we'll focus on hope. Join Kim B. Davis, author, playwright, radio personality, event consultant, professional speaker on the Kim B. Davis Show. Good evening and welcome to the Kim B. Davis Show. I'm your host, Kim B. Davis. And this evening, we have our political strategist, strategist and analyst, Shanae Watson Whitaker. Good evening, Shanae. How are you? I'm okay, Kim. How are you today? Good. You know, so we got a lot to talk about. So let's just get right to it. Yesterday, we were just supposed to certify an election. And it turned into an insurrection. Yes. And yeah. I sat there mesmerized, watching it on TV, horrified, but at the same time, not as concerned with their safety. And I don't mean that you, you're never concerned with people's safety, but these weren't Black people. And, black <laughs> people been, and I, I got to call it like it is. Black people would have been bulldozed down. Yes. I saw video of Capitol Police opening gates for people. I saw people with crowbars and baseball bats breaking windows. And it, it, it harkened back to Hurricane Katrina. Mm -hmm. Remember, there yes, was yes. the visual in New Orleans where they showed a white family, they're trying to survive. But for the black family that they show, they're looting. They're looting. Lawlessness. Exactly. It's lawlessness. There's no law and order. Everything is chaos. Mm -hmm. But what I saw yesterday was an absence of law and order, an absence of what, you know, um, America is supposed to stand for. I saw chaos. I saw sedition. I saw treason. I saw, because, um... I, I saw gluttony. And I'm using that word intentionally because I saw people sitting on people's desks with their feet propped up, big smiles. Yes. You know, taking mail. I saw someone take a podium out the front door as if he had garnered some, some great prize that was supposed to be his. And today we found out that he's selling it on eBay. So, Shanae, I don't know how much more I, I can say. I saw the sea of people there, and it was ridiculous, the amount of people I saw. It looked like an inauguration event. And it's ironic because we're about 13, 14 days out from our actual inauguration. Yes. And what's interesting, uh, one of the last things I'll say is what's interesting about this is that you had people using the very things that were placed there for the inauguration to break into the people's house. We saw people on scaffolding. We saw people pulling down towers and, and, and other things that are going to be used. And it just was surreal to see people um, at, the, at the speaker's table, to see people on the House and the Senate floor but what was even more jarring for me was the staffers. And I know you have worked for um, political uh, offices before. I have. We have been staffers. We know what the security is. We know what we can talk about. We know what we can't talk about. We know certain documents, you know, are, are office sensitive, depending on what it is. You know, I've worked locally and have done some things at the state level. And I remember I organized a four-day bus tour mm -hmm. for a local organization which elevated their platform to statewide status and, and made them a recognizable leader. And you cannot go into a Capitol building. I don't care if it's Lansing, um, New York City, or D.C. There are layers yes. of security. You have to have identification. You have to have security, either key fobs, cards, something. You just can't walk in just willy-nilly and say, oh, I'm Shanae. I'm, I work here. Who are you? No, we need to see credentials. Correct. And so the other issue that bothers me 
this was an inside job. Someone had to open the door because from what I understood, they left the side door open and these people plowed through it. And I saw staffers sitting in a balcony with oxygen bags in their hands or on their heads in sheer terror because you have people banging on the doors trying to get through. Tell, tell me, how do we make this make sense? Because, you know, everybody keeps asking me what's going on. It doesn't make sense. White supremacy doesn't make sense. I mean, when you have the president of the United States moments before uh, these uh, rioters uh, <laughs> went to the white, to the uh, Capitol building, he said, I'm going to march with you. Let's march to, to the Capitol. Meanwhile, homeboy went on to the White House and minded his business while the rest of them did their, their work. And then you had Giuliani, who spoke earlier at this rally, um, telling, asking for a duel you know, uh, yeah. death by trial by combat, stuff yeah. like that. I mean, some middle, middle Game of uh, medieval mess. Game of Thrones. Game yes. of Thrones. Yes. Yes. That I thought of. I mean, this is the the it's the people that we're dealing with. These are white supremacists. They will do anything they can just to hold on to power. And if, a few minutes ago, uh, Trump had released a video. It looked like a hostage video. It was actually spliced up pretty nicely. And you know, you'll get the calls while well, he sound like he was bringing the country together and he wants to unite us now. And he took on a different tone. No, we are, he is what he says he is. He's not going to concede. He was happy that these people were going in there into the Capitol and storming in and destroying property. He knew that Mike Pence was going to said no to what he wanted. And he knew Mike Pence and his family was going to be there. So he put the vice president's life in danger too. Mm -hmm. And then waited and it took Mike Pence to actually call on the National Guard to the DC National Guard to come in and to help quell the situation and Trump wouldn't do so. So, and, and even in this press conference, he says, I mean, in this video, he stated, oh, well, you know, I called in the National Guard and they came in and I thanked them. It's just nonsense. We know who he is. He's a white supremacist. He will do anything he can to stay in power. He thought that Mike Pence could uh, turn away the uh, the electoral college results and, and decide that Trump is, you know, absolute uh president, but it didn't happen. So that's not how the system works. And now he's pissed off uh, at his people and he's turned on everybody. And he's, you know, he looked at uh, Mr. Brad Wolf that he was supposed to appoint today. Uh, he took away, took that out. So he's gone. Uh, so right now we're, we're in a free for all and we don't know what to do. And, pres and Vice President Pence, I almost called him President Pence, mm -hmm. stated that he wouldn't invoke the 25th Amendment. I mean, right now we're in a stasis and I, I don't like where it's going and I don't trust these people. And one thing I've learned out of this entire ordeal is the Lincoln Project, these are former Republicans. They know who these people are. They do not believe in taking their foot off these people's backs. They believe in you get them and you get them and you make sure you ostracize them and you don't let them back in. Mm -hmm. People like Trump, you do not give him any kind of validation because once you give him an inch, he, inch, he will take a mile. These people are here to burn yeah. this country down and so they can get what they want. Well, and, and so, Shanae, talk to us a little bit because, you know, we keep hearing that conversation, um, that thought process about what we want, what we deserve. This government is treasonous. This government is enslaving us. This government um, is, is making us uh, do things. There's the, the fake COVID plague. There is no COVID plague. They're taking away your civil rights which I hate when people say that by way, making you wear a mask. Um, the last time I checked, Amazon, Microsoft, Ford, GM, Chrysler, whatever they call themselves now, Fiat Chrysler, um, Bank of America, uh, TCF Center, they're all owned by people that don't look like us, right? Correct. These are private entities. Yes, so and they how, do, we don't own it. <laughs> Right. So how are, so when people say, well, Black Lives Matter is ruining our country. I'm like, what are we doing? All we try to do is stop the police from killing us. No, equality for <laughs> them is ruining this, this country and it takes them down the rich, racial hierarchy. They don't, they want to be at the top and they realize that if we achieve the true dream of racial equality and racial equity, that they have to actually work a little harder to be to, to be where they think they are right now. So, and it, this is, it's a threat to them. I mean, 
eight years of President Obama and black excellence is a threat to them. So they voted for Trump and they want to maintain that status quo. They want to feel like they're on top. So they want to keep Trump in office. Now that they realize that they've lost, I, I, I'll be honest with you, these people know he lost, but they don't care. They mm -hmm. don't care. They know what the deal is. These, I mean, I, I try not, to, I try to give Americans the benefit of a doubt. We've all watched the news. I don't care what your news sources are. You can do math. You know that there are people, more people in X state than there are in Y state. So, you know, people know where the votes are. I mean, this just common sense. So it, we're just dealing with people who just don't care. They don't, they don't care about you or I, they don't care about our allies. All they want to do is maintain a racial hierarchy. I mean, if you notice all of these groups that are out there, the, the, the proud boys, the boogaloos, the three percenters, these white supremacist groups, that's what they are. And then you have people like Josh Hawley and Ted yeah. Cruz who have sp spines of, of jellyfish. Mm -hmm. You know, they're spineless individuals who, who want to be that next Trump. They want to take on that mantle because they feel like that's the only way they can succeed. They'd rather give in to animus and hatred than to fight for country and, and unity. Mm -hmm. So we, we know who we're dealing with. They know who they are and they know what they're about. It's again, it's about racial hierarchy and, and maintaining the status quo. So you brought up Josh Hawley. I want to talk about this guy because I find it interesting um, that someone would give the sign. And then we find out that there was, is, now Josh Hawley, he's not the same guy from West Virginia, is he? No, he is not. I didn't think he was. So the, then we have the newly elected uh, representative from West Virginia who yes. videotaped himself saying we're in the the egregiousness of taking selfies and recording video and showing it on your Facebook page. The, um, a friend of mine sent me a snapshot of some guy who was part of the mob yesterday and he he is front and center where you can see him. Well, he's an attorney for some big insurance firm. And on Twitter today, they said, well, this person is no longer employed by us. Did these people really think this through or, you know, or do you think that this is their, their, I hate to use a Pearl Harbor moment, a watershed moment. I'll say watershed. Do you think that this is their watershed moment? I think this is just their modus operandi. That's how white supremacy works. They think they can get away with breaking the law. They think they can get away with rushing into a building, destroying pu uh, public property. They can go into offices and steal uh, software and, and, and hardware and, and, and confidential materials. Mm -hmm. They can just do that. They can urinate in these offices. They can trash them and, and get away with it. They can shoot people. They had zip ties. They yeah. knew what they were doing. These people came in, they were, they were armed. For yeah. some reason, these people went through security and did not get checked by security. If you or I walked in the, in the building and I've been to Capitol Hill, mm -hmm. they would not let you in with a pocketbook. Right. right. <laughs> so it's it's it they know what they were doing. I, I I'm of the the uh thought processes that there are people that were that were aware of what was going to happen. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but you know, I'm not blind to to the obvious. When I see a police officer let these people in, mm -hmm. mm -mm. and when I see them taking selfies, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. and they were shooting at people and it looked like the secret service had to jump in and really they were the ones who were really the line of defense mm -hmm. and there are 2200 capital police officers yeah. and don't tell me come on now if they were all stationed there we would have had a different story we wouldn't have had this and mm -hmm. and there's a reason why the capitol hill chief resigned today they hadn't Perfect. even spoken to nancy pelosi after the day after this is ridiculous this is the this, this speaker of the house this is the people's house mm -hmm. this is third the person who's third in line to the presidency and and they hadn't spoken to her this is disgraceful i just i think that there's too much going on and then donald trump himself on december 19th uh talked about this january 6th be there so something was brewing mm -hmm. uh, in, in that in that atmosphere and, and they knew it was going to pop off and, and it's just, it came to fruition. It was just too perfect, too right for the moment. And I just thank God that no one of, of none of the congressional staff, none of the mm -hmm. congressmen and congresswomen were hurt mm -hmm. or, or killed. 
-hmm. And unfortunately, uh, uh, there was a person that died there. She was shot and killed. She tried to jump through a window and, you know, God bless her family, but you know, she, yeah. she shouldn't have done what she did. Right. And uh, other people had died and mm -hmm. they were inside trying to do the same thing and, and died of heart attacks or whatnot. But you know, that, that was for their, they were martyrs for their cause. Mm -hmm. They were. My I, white supremacy. Exactly. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. Yep. Pick it up that, you know, unfortunately not everybody makes it out. Um, so I want to put a pin in that because I want to come back to the Josh Holly and the new legislator from West Virginia. I want to go because I was screaming at the TV yesterday when I saw the black uh, cap, uh, or I think he was just security personnel in um, the house yes. and the mob was chasing him. And I was like, please get away because if they caught him, I said, they're either going to lynch him or kill him on camera because I agree with you. I saw the picture of the guy with the zip ties. What I didn't realize is they did have bombs there yesterday. Yes. That were diffused. And, yes. I, and I had said to my husband, I said, the next thing you know, somebody will strap a bomb onto themselves and become a suicide bomber. And, you know, we talk about domestic terrorism. I don't know when in this country we're actually going to have a substantive conversation about that because we do have an issue with that and regardless as to how you feel about politics in 2016 when donald j trump won all of us who were supporting the other candidate said okay he won we're going to put country before you know party and, and those things but we will still mobilize and rally and organize because 2020 is around the corner and we're mm -hmm. going to make sure that we fix this mistake and we did we won stacy abrams did a fantastic job down in georgia along with the other allies that helped her we have been able to flip georgia blue however we still see these people so my question to you is because one of the things that I've been saying for these, the, because there were six that objected to uh, certifying the election from what I heard today. And for those that um, participated, example, the dude from West Virginia and Josh Holly, what are some things do you think that can be done to demonstrate because I think they should be brought up on charges of treason. That, well, that's my thought. The way that the Senate is set up is so uh, congenial. I think what they'll probably do is isolate Josh Hiley and Ted Cruz and marginalize them and uh, expect challenges in in uh, the next election cycle mm -hmm. uh, with Josh Hiley in, in 2022 and Ted Cruz in 2022. I think there are going to be a segment of, of Republicans that say enough is enough with these two and run somebody against them. Um, but when it comes to the Congress, I'm not sure. I, I don't think that they're going to do any, too much to them, maybe censure them. Right. The most I, they could probably do is censure them. And I don't expect anything much from them. But the, the thing that I am deeply concerned about is these two men are very, are, are smarter than Trump. Yeah, and they are more politically astute than Donald Trump. Even though they're not as as loud and as as rebunctious, uh, uh, they do know how to get his message across, and that that's what makes them even more dangerous. Mm -hmm. So that's my worry and concern. Both men want to be president in 2024. I think Cruz is such uh, so. How do you say? I had to roll my eyes. He's <laughs> so uh, people like boo, boo, like they they think of him as a fool so he's not going to, and he's disliked in the in the senate so we're not going to hear too much about him but they know that hall is is dangerous he's his he's about his ambition for his political ambition he's always wanted to be president from the time he started started off with the young republicans on and and the positions he was put in to succeed so you know this man is highly ambitious and will do anything he can to to get be president of the united states including um lying about the election so mm -hmm. and unfortunately ambition can be your undoing because it can yes. absolutely destroy you yes so now i want to go back to something i was talking about with the the black guy who was being chased we saw the visual 
of, of the stand down between him. A lot of black people, African-Americans have said, you know what, this isn't our fight. And I agree, it's not our fight. However, we still live in this country. We still have to participate and vote mm-hmm. and, and be a part of it. What do you think that this says to us, first, first and foremost? And then secondly, what do you think um, Black people should, should be concerned about going forward with this situation? Well, I was very concerned about the residents of D.C. You know, people, you know, these people, they, they have an objective. And their objective is to, to destroy. Mm-hmm. And... DC is still a majority black city. So I was very worried about the citizens. I even posted on my Facebook page, you know, stay safe because I know there are random citizens that walk around the streets DC every day, or there there are people who work in retail and and those jobs. And, you know, our people, those are the jobs we do. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be outside after the curfew and they're most vulnerable. So I was very concerned about that. I, I, I just hope and pray that these people, our people remain safe. You know, our citizens, fellow citizens, innocent bystanders remain safe and those people are prosecuted. Now for us here in Michigan, I'm worried about Lansing because yeah. I'm, I'm seeing a number of these people are, are coming from Michigan. And these are the, this is the same crowd that it had uh, protested uh, Governor Whitmer and the state house and state Senate last year there was the that was the blueprint and people saw that they could get away with it and and trump was okay with it and these people threatened to kill governor whitmer and and it was like poo-pooed i mean only people who took it seriously honestly was the state of michigan and dana nessel our state took it seriously but trump and the feds they didn't take this seriously so i'm going to, we're going to see this in other state count capitals i mean they were at jay Inslee's house the governor of washington state they were in utah at the governor's house i mean and he's a republican mm-hmm. and they were at different places all over the country so I, i'm i'm very concerned i don't think you know there are certain people i know that they wouldn't step to i don't think they'd go to cuomo's house in albany because <laughs> they know he's kind of crazy <laughs> so he he's about that life he's from queens yeah he, he, might they, somebody, a for he real. will fight he will fight you <laughs> so uh but they know who they can mess with and uh, and i'm very concerned about people who are bystanders who are around these the state capitals um, most of the time state capitals they round a lot of people of color mm-hmm. so um that's what i worry about I, I worry about that this is being okay and i i feel like i, I i'm on I would say this, I'm a bit on edge and on a watch and see and wait and see mode, but there's something that has to be done. I hope that when uh, uh, President-elect Biden becomes president, that there is more attention paid to, to these groups and that they are classified as terrorist groups because the last of this current administration refused to do so, even though it's been said multiple times that this is the, this is the biggest concern Americans have to worry about is white extremist uh, mm-hmm. violence. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm hoping that it quells down, but I don't think so. I think these people are here to stay as long as the Republican Party and places like Parler and Fox News and o, 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 OANN, they keep giving these people a, plat, a platform. So as long as they have them and it's a money-making business, I tell people white supremacy is a billion dollar business. As long as they take the money out of it, pe- as, this, people are still going to do it. Exactly, exactly. So I'm going to come back to that. We're going to talk about Parler really quick, but I want to go back to Michigan. And when we were talking about the state capitol, because while I was watching that yesterday, I was thinking, wow, what happened in Lansing a couple of months ago? Was that a test run? And now people are saying they think that it really was a test run. And so we have to have a conversation about guns in our capital. We have to have a conversation about why is it okay for people to storm our capital instead of mobilizing and rallying and educating and organizing. You're using violent force instead of being peaceful, which is what you tell everybody else to do. Um, you know, they, they pull guns on Jocelyn Benson's house, who is our secretary of state. And, you know, for me, listening to the plot to kidnap the governor and having the layout to her vacation home, I just thought, wow, you guys are on a whole different tangent than what we knew. And 
I know, you know, a lot of people will say, you know, we might have missed some things, but now we sure do know. Someone, I'm in a political group online and someone said that they saw a post in another group that they were in that people were saying goodbye to their relatives because they were going to DC. And people keep saying that this was all organized on groups like Parler and other conservative groups. And you mentioned OANN, which is a conservative news source because apparently Fox News is out of favor with the conservatives now. Yeah. Yes, they these uh, sites they are just there to to mar uh, bring these people together to organize and to uh, make a whole lot of hey, I mean when I tell you about white supremacy, that is a heck of a drug. It is a drug and people are addicted to it. They have nothing else to to hold on to. They can hold on to their white supremacy regardless of whatever uh grievances that they have. And if you notice, a lot of these people are, are professionals. You had some lawyers there. You had a, yeah. a spouse of a doctor there. You have business owners there. So these people, you have people are coming flying in in private jets. Mm -hmm. So these aren't poor people. No, are, not this is not economic anxiety. This is not what, what people were trying to make excuse for four years ago. This mm -hmm. is what they are. They are racist and they will do anything they can to, to keep themselves it, at the top of the racial hierarchy. So we are up against something big. And again, those are the Fox News of the world, the parlors of the world, the the the, the news network, the new OA, and, and all they are, they are just, they're money makers. Mm -hmm. They they feed off of people's insecurity and, and their anxieties. And, and, and that's what we're up against. And no matter what we try to do, uh, and no matter what a white politicians try to do, they, these people are not winnable. They are not, they, we can't, they are so stuck in their ways and they're willing to believe anything about anyone who disagrees with them that they're willing to kill for it. Yes, so and these these people are crazy, and and of uh, the militia groups that we have in the state, they have such a following and a devotion to this cause that they send people out there. And then you have people in the Michigan Republican Party, person who's running for chair, mm -hmm. was out there as well, mm -hmm. cheering this on, and she's out there, and and, and it's like it's not a big deal to the right. party. So you know this is what we're up against here. And, and I tell people that then when they talk about Michigan and say, what's going on up there? I said, this is what, this is real. Mm -hmm. These people are real. Mm -hmm. They are serious about this. They don't care. They have a hatred for, for you and I based on, on, on them not being superior, their thought of being superior. So, and, and that's what we're going to deal with. And for the rest of our lives, as long as we're here, we have to deal with that. And, and, and these people are an are aided and abetted by our Senate and House leadership as well. As long as they can keep these people in power, they are willing to do the work to make sure that these people are, are stay happy. And it includes oppressing you and I. And then dealing in 2022, we're going to be up against some tougher voting laws, mm -hmm. voter ID laws. Mm -hmm. And I expect it, I know the governor's going to veto it, but at the same time, it's it might be politically risky because the way these people um, package their their uh, pieces of legislation that are coming up. So, uh, um, voting rights groups have been talking about it during the um, during the holiday break about what we're going to expect next. So, yes, because Georgia just passed some stricter uh, voting requirements guidelines for ballot for mail in ballots. So we know that that is definitely coming. So I want to ask you the 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 next big question: What do you think is going to happen? in the next two weeks. I'm scared to think about it. Um, I know that Iran popped back up on the radar again. It is the anniversary of General Sol Soleimani's death and they are still calling for blood. So it's gonna be interesting to see if something jumps off internationally. I can mm -hmm. see that. Um, but what, what do you think are some possibilities of some things? Cause I, I think, think literally they're gonna to have to walk him out in handcuffs. <laughs> handcuffs or kicking and screaming <laughs> shoot i'll be honest with you if you want to make a real money make a watch that yes right <laughs> that'll get more views than the, the inauguration that's for sure yeah um i i we're at, we're at like a, a crossroads right here i i hope and i pray i hope the senate and the house impeach him and i hope that he is removed mm -hmm. i think that he is so volatile and unpredictable for 
you know, for what he's going to do next, that we can't afford that. And the next administration shouldn't be hampered by what he does in the next two weeks because he's feeling vindictive. So uh, that's what I'm, I'm more concerned about at this time is what's next. To be honest with you, going back to work, you know, you, you were trying to work and you're trying to pay attention to what's going on at this time. And I feel like it's no, it's very hard to not, not pay attention mm -hmm. and to focus on what you are everyday day-to-day -day lives. And, and I think that's also a disservice to productivity at, at work and at home. So I, I just hope that both the House and the, the Senate take the next step and remove him because he has to go. He does, but I don't think that the Republicans at this time are willing to do that because they don't want to deal with the political consequences of his supporters at this time. And that is a perfect way to end our, our, our session. Thank you again, Shanae, for breaking this all down to us. Tell us how we can reach you and how we can find you online. Well, you can reach me online. I am La Femme Negrita on Twitter, so you can follow me. I will follow you back. Um, and, and that's basically how you can reach me. And I'm always on when I'm not at work. So, <laughs> but yeah, you can reach me on Twitter. I'm, I'm always accessible on that, that platform. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for coming on. I know that in the next two weeks, it'll be something that we're going to keep praying that, you know, he can yes. be stable and just not do anything crazy, but I'm sure I'll be calling you again, like, Sinead, come back on and, and help us understand what's going on. No problem. Anytime, Kim. And thank you for having me. And thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you. You, you have been watching the Kim B. Davis Show. I hope that you'll tune in for our next episode. And as always, remember, be magnificent.